If you're a trader that you know that's blinded by the lights and you're, you're you fall in love with the stock instead of falling in love with reality, if Tesla loses the 50-day moving average, it could give us an incredible premium trade. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody's having uh, a beautiful, beautiful trading week. Hopefully everybody's living their best life. Hopefully everybody is just happy. At the end of the game, that's all that matters. Um, We'll get to the we'll get to everything in a second. Uh, first and foremost, guys, I want to um, you know I want to thank all you guys for all your continuous years of support. Uh, as you guys know, this is going on our fourteenth, maybe even fifteenth year of hosting uh, the Access a Trader uh, platform. So thank you very much for all your support throughout the years. And if you are brand new to the channel, thank you very much for subscribing. Or if you haven't do, done so, please subscribe, share, like. Uh, so you can continue this journey uh, with us on the indefinite, right? Indefinite uh, journey of no trophies, uh, no pats in the backs, just constant learning and constant reminder that once we figure out we've got it uh, just a little bit, we understand a little bit what's going on, the market really shows us who the boss is and humbles us. So hopefully, guys, welcome aboard. And hopefully, you guys continue uh, to get uh, value and I could continue to add value uh, towards your day. So let's talk about it, right? Um, yesterday, if you watched the video on Thursday, um, we had Apple and uh, Amazon coming out with earnings. Uh, Apple uh, missed their quarter. I think it's the third straight time they missed their quarter. Light iPhone sales, that definitely didn't help out. Amazon was the other side of the spectrum, had an incredible quarter, a really, really great quarter uh, attributed to uh, the massive cloud business, which is known as uh, the Amazon uh, Web Services, right? Uh, AWS. And that's kind of uh, ironic because that's what the cloud business, that's what Microsoft that reported earnings earlier last week kind of blamed uh, for their uh, uneventful quarter. So we had kind of a, a pull and pull, pull and pause or tug and pull uh, throughout, uh, throughout the day. And the question going to today's session was, well, was Amazon strong enough to pull the market up or was Apple going to be a Debbie Downer and pull everything down? And in the meantime, we had the biggest point of all from the technical point of view. Again, that's the only thing we care about is the technical point of view is we had two days in a row of the queues closing below the 20 day moving average entering today's channel. So it was very, very important because if you again, if, you, if you're watching this broadcast, you kind of know the market has held the 20 day moving average relentlessly. I mean, we've been talking about every single time uh, it's come up to the 20 day moving average, we see how aggressive bulls defended it. But you know, this time was different, right? We had a, we had a very, very uh, aggressive reversal on Wednesday an inside day on Thursday and led us for today. And everything was going well, right? Everything was going well. Uh, the market was surging. Uh, everything was going strong. Uh, Amazon was up like, you know, 15 points. Like everything was ripping. And then something we noticed, we started talking about this in the in the webinar. If you go on, uh, if you go on my regular feed, I, I tweeted out uh, the Dan Chef 55 feed. I tweeted out around 124, 124, 130. In that area, if you look at the cues, you can see it here on the one minute chart, on, on the five minute chart, somewhere around here, right? Somewhere around here, they started dumping. I'm talking about, if you look at the five minute intervals, they started dumping a ridiculous amount of cues, just two, 300,000 share clips at a time. And it looked like somebody really wanted out. But at this point, the NASDAQ was still at the high of the day, it was like, up 250 you know we were just coming in for you know kind of a, a back test into support and they started really coming down with very very aggressive just swarms of selling swarms of selling it felt like somebody wanted out it felt like somebody knew that there was a piece of news uh, that was about to drop whatever the case may be but it was so obvious they just wanted out and then you, you know obviously you see what happened towards the end of the day uh, the speculation was, you know, maybe there's another downgrade from another 
uh, agency, whether it's Moody, Standard & Poor's, whatever the case may be. Because if you guys remember, you know, the week started out, right? The week started out with a Fitch downgrade. We downgrade. We got downgraded. The United States got downgraded uh, in throughout the, you know, that obviously ruffled a lot of feathers. That obviously took down a very aggressive uh, bull flag that was being built uh, throughout the whole week. So when we had this big downgrade of Fitch, prices, you know, felt it. And the most important part was that was the first day that we closed below the 20 day moving average, right? That was a big deal. We haven't seen that for a very long time. Yesterday was an inside day. They couldn't get a back above the 20 day moving average. And today, you know, we were there for majority of the day. We were above that 375, 376, 377 level literally the whole day until, like I said, around 125, 130, somebody just wanted out. They started dumping futures that translated into the NASDAQ 100. And we just sold off super aggressively, a really, really big move. And you, when you look at the scoreboard, uh, this is the fourth week in a row that the NASDAQ, the Teflon NASDAQ and the S&P 500 have notched their fourth straight week in a row of losses. Now, the question is, well, is this the bull market's over? Let's not, you know, let's, I mean, I'm starting, I start seeing these things on social media. That's it. This is the top. The market's going to go to zero. Relax. Nobody knows. Nobody's about to guess. Nobody's about to predict anything. But the one thing we do know is the collection of data. And that's the most important part, guys. We are now starting to build a, a home, right? We're starting to build a home. Like all this was demand, rising demand. And now this demand is acting as supply. So we're now day three below the 20-day moving average. And the longer that we build a base below the 20-day moving average, eventually we're going to run out of a catalyst, right? And that's the most important part to understand. The longer something builds above the level, the higher the probability this either the stock, the ETF, or whatever the case may be, the index in this, in this juncture will follow through in that level. So like I said on Thursday's video, for, the bulls have to, right? They have to hold and close over the 20-day moving average, and we fail to do that. We don't We don't know, or maybe we find out over the weekend uh, why there was such a massive dump from 130 into the close. But the point is here, the scoreboard is the scoreboard, and now we're three days nestled in below the 20-day moving average. And all you need to do, folks, again, and I always encourage traders to do so, Backtest what I'm talking about, right? Backtest what happens when a, when a market or an ETF in this in this juncture is building a base below a major moving average, right? Now again, it's not as strong as the 50-day, it's not as strong as the 200-day, but this is a very important intermediate moving average, as you can see here, that they held for months and months and months, and now we're three days below it. So we're running out of catalyst, guys. Remember, uh, earnings seasons, at least for the majority of the big heavy hitters is starting to come into the eighth, ninth inning. Yes, you have NVIDIA still coming up, but is NVIDIA gonna, g going to save the NASDAQ? Is it going to save the market, right? Uh, you know, we, we had an opportunity today, and we were, again, 85% of the day above the 20-day, and eventually, at the end of the day, they failed, and the, the, the closing price is fair value. You can say, well, the market, you know, the market's going to rebound on Monday. Well, that's fantastic. You can say that, but the, but the data is saying completely other, and the most important part we have to watch for uh, going into Monday's session is, well, what's going to happen with the individual stocks that are sitting at the bottom of the range? So I'll give you a perfect example, right? Here's Tesla. I know, you know, people are charged. When I talk about Tesla to the upside, we had this massive, massive push to the upside. Everything was great. Tesla to the moon, diamond hands, whatever the hell social media talks about, that's great. But now Tesla, and we've been talking about this now, this isn't the first time we're talking about Tesla, Right. Now it's building a base. It's building a very, very heavy base. And you can see it also below the 20-day moving average. And now it's nestled between the 50 rising support, which is a massive, massive support, and below the 20. Something has to give here. You see what I'm saying, guys? You see this, this, this blue line? This is the 50-day moving average, okay? If, if you see what happens when a stock loses the 50-day moving average or reclaims the 50-day moving average, well, I'm going to show you in a second, right? So here is the first time, go back to, this is the, the most recent, right? The most recent time, right? So Tesla on April the 5th lost the 50-day moving average. You see that right here, guys? So what happened for the next couple of weeks, it started a really, really aggressive cycle of selling. And we went from the 50-day moving average roughly from 184 all the way down to 152. You see that, right? This is the first close below the 50, and we just completely fell apart.
Now look what happens the first time a stock gets above the 50 day moving average, right? So right here on um, a, let's see, May the 18th, right? May the 18th, Tesla closed above the 50 day moving average. And look what happened. It started a massive cycle of buying. So something that's very, very basic, even if you are brand new to trading or brand new uh, to technical analysis, it's, it's a very easy formula, okay? Anything that's above the 50-day moving average is deemed bullish. Anything below the 50-day moving average will start a selling cycle. And again, it's not just an opinion. That's what it is. Go backtest this weekend. If you want to improve your trading and you want to talk about backtesting, improving your uh, technical skills or, or, or trying to accumulate or predict price action, it starts with the 50-day moving average. See what happens. Take any random stock. See what happens when we're below the 50-day moving average and see what happens when we're above the 50-day moving average. And that's kind of where, I'm, where I want to start here with Tesla. Tesla right now is sitting there, and, and granted, it put in three days in a row of higher lows off the 50-day moving average, but you could see every single time for the last three days, it's touched it. So for Tesla to get bullish, and we talked about this now for the last week, if Tesla gets bullish, it has to reclaim this whole channel here, right? This whole 273. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, if you're a shareholder, if you're an investor, if you're a trader that, you know, that's blinded by the lights and you're, you're, you fall in love with the stock instead of falling in love with reality, if Tesla loses the 50-day moving average, it could give us an incredible premium trade. Now, again, is that going to happen? We don't know. You know, we could only prepare. We're not going to guess. We're not going to anticipate. But boy, oh boy, we've touched it now three days in a row. We've touched this light blue line, which is a 50-day. And if this thing does have a close, below the 50-day moving average. You can see uh, where the potential is. Uh, if you guys remember on Thursday, they were coming for the 255 and the 250 puts for next week. So we'll see. We'll see how the price action pays off. But the point is, again, we're trying to accumulate as much data as possible. And if it does lose the 50-day moving average, we will be uh, absolutely ready. When you look at the majority of other names, right? And we'll start off with the spies as well, right? Same thing with the spies. The spies are day three below the 20-day moving average. They gapped up today, got rejected off the five, which is a short-term sentiment, and they closed below. Again, look how much room you have. Again, we're running out of time here for S&P 500 companies to report earnings that already that have not, that, that matter for the catalyst for, 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 for the short-term foreseeable future. And the longer term they build a base below the 50-day moving average, it's going to be a problem. And when you look at the names, right, you look at names that blew up on earnings or at least had a negative earnings quarter, and that includes Tesla, right? That definitely includes Tesla. But if you look at the other names that had, you know, pretty big moves down on earnings, you could see how, where they're looking to go next. So for example, right, Etsy yesterday had bad earnings, today followed through. Today, for example, DOCN, right? DOCN, miserable quarter, right? Absolutely miserable quarter. Watch this thing for Monday, right? If the market continues to pull and this thing loses the 150-day moving average, look at the volume bar here. This is a massive volume for the stock. If this thing starts losing the bottom of the range, it could get hit. Look at Square, right? Square had a nasty quarter. Absolutely nasty, nasty quarter. The stock got murdered today. Absolutely murdered today. If this thing starts losing this whole bottom channel, this is, again, the first day below the 50-day moving average, it could extend its losses. Look at a name like Mauer, right? Not a, not a beta name, right? Not a mega cap technology name, but this is starting to, to play out really, really well if you're watching the bottom of the range. Look at the bottom of the range here. Look how close this thing is from snapping. Again, I'm, I, don't, I don't follow Bitcoin. I do recognize that Mara and Riot and Coinbase, they track the Bitcoin underlining, right? I get that. But look at, Ma, you know, look at Mara's channel. If this thing starts losing the bottom channel here, this thing can get as, hit as well. Look at a name like Roblox, right? Look at Roblox. Roblox has been underneath the 50-day moving average, right? And that's my point. You see that, guys? You see how the first time it closed below the 50-day moving average on July the 21st, right? Look what's, look what's happening after, right? Look what's happening after. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten days. Two weeks below the 50-day moving average, and it's making lower lows and lower highs on the weekly. And if this thing starts confirming this bottom channel here, this thing has more room. So that 50-day is going to play a huge, huge part on Tesla. And if you run your scans or whatever, how else you uh, look for stocks this weekend, take a look at the names that are closing at or above or even below the 50-day moving average. Those are the names you're going to want to, you know, you're going to really, really want to watch uh, going into Monday's session because if the market can't sustain a rally and we can't reclaim back to 20-day moving average and it will be day four, right? 
eventually these stocks are going to run out of buyers and buyers are going to just get really, really frustrated. And all those channels are going to snap and there's going to be a very, very uh, aggressive catalyst for it. And you can, again, you can, you can see what happened here with Roblox even the first time it lost the 50-day moving average, right? You have two weeks of straight selling. So my focus, obviously, for the week is going to be Tesla. It's always Tesla, right? I mean, it's my favorite stock. I trade long, I trade short. But we're getting into a very, very important area, folks. Uh, and if you are a trader in Tesla, not an investor, you know, maybe the stock goes to 500 one day, I don't know. But we're talking about Monday, right? We're not talking about what's going to happen three years from now or two weeks from now or your opinion. We're talking about Monday. And if we can just get below this channel here, I think so we could get a really good uh, measure of potential. So going into this week, guys, again, the stage is set. Day three below the, the 20 for the Qs. Day t uh, three below the 20 for the Spies. Uh, if you look at, at the Russell, the IWM, right? It's still above the 20. See how it's still holding on to the 20? But if the IWM starts losing this 193 level, it's going to get below the 20 as well. And if you look at the Dow Jones, right? If you look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average, right? We are still hovering around the 20-day moving average. Let's look at the diamonds a little clearer. You see how the you see how the diamonds are just sitting on the 20-day moving average. So all these indexes, all these major benchmarks, they're either now below, right? Two of them are below the 20. Two of them are on the 20. And if they confirm lower prices. The market should pull. We'll see. We'll see, guys. Again, we're always prepared on both sides of the market. We're not guessing. We're not trying to forecast. We're not trying to be smart. We're just being prepared and making sure everybody's prepared uh, and looking at the market with eyes wide open instead of eyes wide shut. Guys, God bless everybody. Have an amazing, amazing weekend. Hope everybody is having love, uh, security, happiness, and health in your life. And with God's help, I'll see you all on the field on Monday. Take care.